Greetings from the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. We first wish all Ghanaians and people listening to us a very happy new year. We're starting this year by recounting our achievements as a ministry. In 2014, we embarked on a journey. We implemented several programs and projects funded by the government of Ghana under our Better Ghana agenda. There were some challenges last year, but on the whole, together with all our officers, together with our colleagues, it was a good year for the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection. The first major event was organized by our Department of Gender to commemorate the International Day for Women. This was in March. For the very first time in the history of Ghana, we had almost 2,000 women, men, children, young persons gathered at the banquet hall to reflect on our achievements in gender development and also looking ahead towards 2014, 2015 and beyond. The summit under the theme Equality for Women is Progress for All through Total Inclusion is an initiative by the Gender, Children and Social Protection Ministry which it intends to institutionalize. Nana Oyelitha tasked women to unite in diversity to achieve a much needed national restructure. To ensure women continue to be empowered we at the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection, we are campaigning vigorously against gender-based violence. Representing market women, Mercy Nijan said more market women are pursuing empowerment through formal education. I'm highly privileged to be here this morning to add my voice to this Ghana Women's Summit 2014. In fact, formally, if there is an occasion like this, and you see market women being invited, they will be invited to occupy the seats. They will be invited as the greatest to make the place full. <laughs> Presently, you see what our women's minister, Kanabo Nono Oyelita, is really doing. Appreciate me. Welcome back. We're still watching the review of activities and programs for the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection 
of the government of Ghana. We supported and were invited to a historic Deba, a grand Deba. This was a Deba of Queen Mothers of the Ashanti Kingdom, Otunfo Osei Tutu II. He commemorated the 15th anniversary of his instalment as Asantehene. And his mother and queen mother of the Asante Kingdom commemorated this by holding the first ever historic Grand Derba of Queen Mothers. We had Queen Mothers from Asante Kingdom, hundreds of them, colorful, and they were joined by Queen Mothers from all over Ghana. The special guest, Her Excellency Mrs. Nana Kunedu Rawlings. The Ministry of Gender was also ably represented. This was so colorful, I wouldn't say much, just watch. Yeah, The Queen Mother of Asante Mampo and acting Asante Hima Nana Ijakoma Difi noted that the Deba was to exhibit the achievements of their visionary leader whose inclusion of women in leadership has yielded visible developments. enjoyed the Deba just like I did and we're very grateful to Otunfo Osei Tutu II, his mother, the Queen Mother and the Mampong Hema for hosting us at this Deba. Still on gender, we had two major international programs. First, we attended the Commission on the Status of Women, 
the 58th session in New York. The 58th sessions of the Commission on the Status of Women. Ghana, led by the Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection, Honorable Nana Oye Lither, attends the 58th session of the Commission on the Status of Women at the United Nations Headquarters in New York, under the theme, Challenges and Achievements in the Implementation of the Millennium Development Goals for Women and Girls. The 58th session was a global meeting, and Ghana is a member of the United Nations. So we were required to be there and to report on Ghana's achievements of the development development goals as at now. It also gave the opportunity to interact with members of other countries, look at the challenges they were facing and how those challenges have been addressed. So at the main review sessions, as the statements of governments of countries came up, you could learn of the challenges. There were also side events, which countries also highlighted on the various programs they've had, the challenges and their successes. So it was an opportunity to learn, also give you the opportunity to network, to interact with people from other countries, especially where you know you have a challenge. Then you can also quickly learn from them if they have a second story in those areas. Apart from that, it was also time for Ghana as a state to present a report on the extent to which it had implemented women's rights. So together with the Honorable Chair of the Gender Committee of Parliament, Honorable Ladi, and her ranking member, Honorable Gifty, we were in Geneva to defend Ghana's CEDAW report. That went on very well, and we now have the concluding observations. We are grateful to His Excellency Ambassador Ediko for also hosting us in Geneva. The 59th session of the Convention on Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women, CEDA, opens in Geneva, Switzerland with a call on political leaders and decision makers to strive and eliminate all forms of violations and discrimination against women in our society. During the opening ceremony, the chairperson for the Committee on Elimination of Discrimination Against Women, Nicole Amelin, adopted the provisional agenda and organizational work by the committee and the report on activities undertaken between the 58th and the 59th session of the committee. Ghana, as a signatory to CEDA and in fulfillment of its obligation under Article 18, has given the mandate to the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection to report annually to the CEDA. In June 2012, Ghana submitted its sixth and seventh consolidated periodic report to CEDA. After reviewing the report, the committee made some observations and raised them as a list of issues to be answered by the government of Ghana. In pursuance of this obligation, a committee first met at the Ministry's conference room to be briefed on the preparation of the report and responses Ghana is to present at the UN. The committee meets the second time at Cleaver House in Accra to fill in the gaps and validate the responses on the issues raised in the Ghana report. The third and final meeting back home was a mock session, where delegates to this year's CEDA conference were made to feel how the session will be like in Geneva. Here types of questions and responses to expect in Geneva were discussed by high power panelists led by the Gender Minister and some members of Parliament, including experts who previously served and the current member on CEDA committee as Ghana representatives. On 24th October 2014, Ghana then took its turn to answer questions on its sixth and seventh report presented to the CEDA committee. It all started with a statement by the Gender Minister Nana Oye Litur, who began with Ghana's priorities of development goals. Constitutional, legislative and institutional framework, restructuring of national machinery and access to justice among others. Then followed with questions from committee members. 
the committee will proceed with agenda item good meeting because uh, if you are invited to such meetings and you come and present your, the status of your country's women, I think it gives you the opportunity to even realize that whatever you are doing, whether you, know you are in the right track or there are gaps that you need to fulfill. And in Ghana, we know that most of our efforts are being uh, collaborated with other ministries. But if the ministry will have a lot of funds, as they always want to uh, uh, get, they can do more, even though we really impress them and they are happy that we even came. I'm even personally happy that we came because we're able to present to them exactly what we are doing in Ghana. And they don't know, most of the countries are not nowhere near Ghana with us, but we there's still room for improvement. Hello, welcome back. We're watching a review of activities, programs, and projects implemented by the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection for the year 2014. We've spoken extensively about gender and women issues. We're now on children. This year, or last year, we were able to finalize our child welfare and, and protection policy. This has gone to cabinet for approval. We have also submitted to cabinet a memo seeking approval to ratify the Hague Convention on Intercountry Adoption. We are developing a child justice policy and are also seeking cabinet approval to amend the Children's Act. We have finalized adoption care regulations and also foster care regulations for children. So we've been very busy. In the process of finalizing the child welfare and children policy, what we did was to host high-level conference of religious leaders across Christian, Muslim, and African traditional religion. Religion for us is very critical, and our religious leaders play a pivotal role in moral upbringing and education. It was important for us to discuss the child welfare and protection policy with the elders, the religious elders, to solicit their opinion and also to get them to help us implement the policy. The government of Ghana and UNICEF held a half-day consultative meeting with religious bodies and faith-based organizations on the 6th of May 2014 at the La Pan Royal Beach Hotel in Accra to discuss the forthcoming child and family welfare policy. We realized that despite the strong legal framework we have, we are not enforcing the laws. It's only 5.3% of us who do not have any religion. And these are the statistics from the statistical service and from the population census of 2010. 95% of us are under the direction and guidance of a religious leader. This creates an opportunity for us to better protect our children because we as the religious leaders can use our churches, our mosques, and our shrines to preach about the positive impact better protection of children in Ghana will have on our development and on our future. Apart from that, we also held a big party for children in Inkoranza in the Brongahafu region. This was a party organized by His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama. We were hosted by the Omanghene of Inkuranza traditional area and Auntie Stella 
who is the municipal chief executive of Inkransa is North and South. You're still watching the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection uh, activities for 2014. We also address issues relating to gender-based violence. We commemorated the 16 days of activism in terms of strengthening the legal framework for Ghana. We have finalized the domestic violence regulations and also finalized the human trafficking regulations. We were happy to host an interministerial conference which looked critically at how relevant government institutions and stakeholders could work together, coordinate our activities to address gender-based violence as a government. This interministerial conference was funded by the UNFPA. Apart from that, as part of the 16 days of activism, we convened and hosted the first ever conference on human rights issues and witchcraft allegations. This conference was at the International Conference Center. Then we went up north to the northern region to the central Gonja district and specifically to Bonyasi where we closed down symbolically the first of six witch camps. 55 women tagged witches and camped in a farming community in the central Gonja district of the northern region have been set free from their bondage. This follows the closure of the Bunyasi Witch Camp, spearheaded by the Ministry of Gender, assisted by civil society organizations, and with support from traditional rulers. I am happy to say that this journey, as we witness today, did not come overnight. It was through the hard work of our partners, including the National Reintegration Committee. It is through the total commitment, total, I say total commitment, of the Gender Ministry under the distinguished leadership of Nana Oyelika. She's been in this region for the past three years and traveling around some of these uh, alleged witch camps to kind of acquaint themselves with some of the conditions and to listen to the victims and talk to the various stakeholders. stop there as a ministry. We also focused on social protection. We also hosted the first ever national conference on social protection and looked at how social protection could help us to reduce poverty in Ghana and also to narrow the inequality gap. Watch as the conference unfolds 
at the International Conference Center. This was funded by the World Bank. Ghana holds its first National Social Protection Conference here in Accra. Growing relevance of social protection to addressing poverty, vulnerability and inequality in Ghana is reflected in the significant increase in the number of programs in the social protection sector. Early as 8 a.m. on the 18th of November 2014, participants had started arriving at Accra International Conference Center to register for the National Social Protection Conference and therefore had the opportunity to see exhibition mounted by the stakeholders. The conference started with a welcome address by the Deputy Minister of Gender, Children and Social Protection, Honorable De La Soa. Representative of the President, distinguished guests, all other protocols duly observed. The extreme poor and the vulnerable in our society need our support and they need to be included in issues of national development. We are very grateful to have the Honorable Marcia Lopez. We are also grateful to have our development partners, the World Bank, DFID, UNICEF, and indeed the entire UN system, the academia, civil society organizations, NGOs, Nananum, Nime, Name, let us all resolve to contribute our quota in this endeavor. The government of Ghana has since 2007 supplemented the poorest families with cash through its Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty program, LEAF. I'm here in the Krachi East District uh, of the Volta region, the district capital, which is Dambai. And uh, I'm here with a team uh, which comprises the Honorable Deputy Minister of uh, Gender, Children and Social Protection, Honorable Dela Sowa, who is also the MP for the Pando constituency in the Volta region. And we are here to monitor the um, LEAP payments for the sec 32nd cycle payment. We are still reviewing our performance for 2014. In the area of LEAP, that is Livelihood Empowerment Against Poverty, a flagship program of the ministry. It started in the year 2008. And it started with 1,642 households in 27 districts in the whole of Ghana. As we speak, we are in 144 districts in Ghana, in all the 10 regions. And we are handling 90,700 plus households. That's the level of expansion we have done from the ministry's perspective. We are also up to date with the LEAP payment. What it means is that we do six cycles in a year. We call each payment a cycle, which is every two months. So in a year we have six cycles. So what it means is that we have reached January 2015 and the last cycle of 2014 will be paid January to make up up payment and that's how it operates. So we are up to date with the payment. So our base data comes from Ghana Statistical Service on the Ghana Living Standards Survey. We are sure by our mandate, and currently we are establishing the National Targeting Center in the Ministry. And what we'll do is to be the National Household Registry. Still talking about 2014, the Ministry organized an engagement with female parliamentarians during the course of the year. And for me, that engagement was very, very important because being females and female parliamentarians, it was necessary that the ministry shared with them what some of our activities are and then seek their support and their advice on the way forward regarding gender issues. In parliament we say when it comes to gender there's no politicization. It must be something we should all embrace wholeheartedly and that is what came out of the engagement. 
And then again, for me, the engagement was also good in the sense that it revealed another side of my minister to the parliamentarians. Either two, they had, all they knew about her was distortions from the media, and meeting her one-on-one -on -one at that engagement brought out the warmth and the gem in her, and they were able to see her for who she really is and not for what they had heard. So that, for me, was a great achievement for us in 2014. As a ministry, we are working very hard to create an infrastructure for the elderly in Ghana. We're looking at those above 65. Our population census of 2010 tells us that 6.7% of our population are elderly. This translates to 1 million and over, and it's important that government supports the elderly. This is also the first time and His Excellency President John Dramani Mahama has taxed us as a ministry to create an infrastructure for the elderly. We have done so, we've created a desk, we are implementing the aged policy and we have also registered a thousand 200 elderly persons and issued the EBAN card to enable them access Metro Mass, pay half the price for Metro Mass Transit and also get priority access at Trotro stations, transport terminals, hospitals and banks. We partnered with the National Health Insurance Authority under Mr. Sylvester Mensa to issue 3,650 national health insurance cards to elderly and aged persons above 65 and some persons with disability. This was done in Greater Accra and the Central Region. We have always said that this ministry is one ministry that is people oriented and so together with our deputy ministers we embarked on working visits to all the regions in Ghana. I started this tour by visiting the central and the western region. I engaged with the market women, I went to the remand home in Central Region, in Swedru. I went to the House of Chiefs in Central Region, met all the Queen Mothers. I also went to Mankasim Market. I went to the School of the Deaf in Central Region in Cape Coast and also met LEAP beneficiaries. And also, didn't I go to Fijai? Both teaching and non-teaching staff. We are very grateful to them for the work they are doing and the dedication and the commitment. But you as a student, you have a responsibility. You have to study hard. And yesterday I was telling the students in Sweden, you work hard and you play hard. You don't work hard and play harder. You work hard and you play hard. I was at Esipon and I saw the state of the remand home and the state of the school. And we have undertaken this as one of our priority projects for this year. It was also insightful to engage with the children at the orphanage. It makes us see that there's a need for tighter regulation and monitoring of orphanages throughout. Thank you and a happy new year once again from the Ministry of Gender, Children and Social Protection.